Okay, welcome to another edition of Unisky Network Tutorial. This course is going to focus on introduction to transmission media. Now, by the end of this course, you are expected to understand what constitutes a network, to identify the basic components of a network, and finally describe the basic mechanisms of communication over a network. Now, a simple network is comprised of at least two end stations and a medium over which data can be carried. So this data could be resources shared from say point A to point B. Now, it is not in all cases we have physical mediums connecting end stations as in this particular diagram. In some cases, we have wireless connection between point A to point B or other points of a network and to understand these mediums of connection uh, we would have to take a look at the various types of uh, network mediums we have which has to do with the various type of cables we can use in network connection that brings us to what is called the uh, copper coaxial cabling commonly used to support users as part of a shared network uh, we hardly come across this type of connection in today's networking because this cable is running out of use but we see it in typical backbones from say a, a modem to a dish mounted outside or from maybe a dish mounted outside to our tv decoder that cable we see there which most people refer to as the rf cable is what we call the coaxial cable it's connected to a tip called the b and c connector uh, which is actually the Bionet Neil Councilman connector. That is how the BNC is got. So we have the thin net and then the thin wire cable. Now these cables are subject to attenuation uh, where the thin net cable travels up to 185 meters before attenuation sets in and then the thick net travels up to 500 meters before attenuation sets in. Attenuation is the distance a medium is able to carry data before it loses a signal so uh, attenuation sets in when the medium gets longer or when the distance gets longer so the further you go the lesser the strength of the signal and again we have what is called the ethernet cable which most people term as the utp the untwisted pair this is a combination of eight cables of which is a pair of uh, four with uh, unique colors blue orange green and then brown of which each solid color has a striped color uh, alongside so we for example we have blue and white blue orange white orange green white orange and then brown and then white brown it follows a standard arrangement to achieve its purpose of which we have two main ways of arranging this particular cable we have the type a which is usually called the crossover cable and then we have the type b which is usually termed as what the straight through cable so it depends on what you would want the cable to achieve or what work you would want the cable to do that defines the arrangement of color code you use you would find a detailed explanation of the cable preparation on our tutorial on uh, ethernet cables but with this particular lecture it's just an introductory to what the cable can actually do now this cable is connected to a tip called the rj45 connector which is the registered jack for such mediums there are other uh, registered jacks for uh, say rj11 and then rj13 which is used for telephone lines and then the uh, we also have the male and then female modules that can also be used alongside now with the ethernet cables we have the category three four and five which are the very old uh, type of ethernet cables we, we use but now there is a category six and then the category seven but even with category six we have the indoor and the outdoor cables then we have the category six e category uh, 6a and so on and so forth so it would all depend on your purpose what you want to achieve if you want to be transmitting 
more voice on your network or more data or you would want to combine both that would have to call for which cable you use on your network then again another cable that comes to mind is the fiber optic cable with the fiber optic cable it allows for transmission of data over long distance as compared to the ethernet cable we can have a fiber optic cable which transmits up to a 10 base f transmitting for over 2000 meters uh, the ethernet cable can only transmit up to 100 meters before it loses attenuation sets in before it loses its signal but the fiber optic cable is able to transmit up to 2000 meters some of them are even able to go up to say 10 kilometers or more now this is also split in two we have the single mode and the multi-mode fiber cables the single mode cable or the multi-mode cable is able to uh, support uh, range standards of 10 megabits per second through to 100 megabits per second and is able to reach up to 10 gigabit per second transmission now the single mode cable travels far more than the multi-mode cable because it takes just one ray of light where uh, is the use of an optical transmission medium for propagating of what light because the fiber cable uses light for its propagation but the multi-mode supports propagation of multiple modes of optic optical transmission and that is subject to attenuation because of its multi-mode nature it is not able to carry the signal for a very long distance because it would have to uh, drop along the line then we have what is called the serial cable which is hardly used in today's networking it is limited to mainly what we call the console cable it's usually attached to our console on the device and then locked to our computer so, so that we can have a local connection to the device and configure it for enterprise use then as uh, the medium transmits it is usually uh, put in patterns of which we have the signal data encoding so the encoding is used to synchronize the transmission on the network of which we all know is usually in binary which is what our zeros and ones now when this particular transmission is made or when a data transmission is made it goes to a specific place or a particular place which is known as a collision domain and the collision domain is a network segment connected by a shared medium or two repeaters where simultaneous data transmissions collide with one another now the, there are other mechanisms or there is a mechanism that allows for us to detect collision domains and a typical example of such a mechanism is the career sense multiple access collision detection which is the cs ma slash cd however even after taking such precautions the potential for the occurrence of collisions as a result of simultaneous transmission by two end stations remains highly probable then again as the transmission goes on it is usually split in two or it is understand it is understood sorry it is understood in two modes which is the half duplex and then the full duplex modes now the half duplex refers to the communication of two or more devices over a shared physical medium in which a collision domain exists and with its csma is required with its csma is required to detect for such collisions right Where, whereas the full duplex defines a simultaneous bidirectional communication over dedicated point to point wire pairs ensuring that there is no potential for collisions to occur and thus there is no requirement for a cms a csma so usually it is recommended that we use full duplex in order to avoid such collisions on our networks so this brings us to the end of our first lecture on uh, transmissions now at this point i expect that you should be able to understand uh, which forms of cabling, cabling can be used to support gigabit Ethernet transmissions within an enterprise network. You should also understand what a collision domain is, and then you should also know the purpose of the CSMA slash CD. Thank you for watching, and then 
please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then you can also contact us uh, via the following information provided on your video. Thank you.